The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients. Well, 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 it is Friday, the 10th day of November 2023. Welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. I'm Jamal Hartman, and Maya Palacio will be with you in a bit to bring you the latest in her news break brought to you by People's Pharmacy. You know, I smile, you know, in honor of Sherry, of course, because, you know, Friday is her favorite day of the traditional work week. But I smile because, you know, you have an idea sometimes of what the topic of the discussion is going to be the next day on this very show. And then something happens overnight uh, that makes you reconsider what you should discuss and what you should bring uh, to the forefront or, you know, what the audience wants to get engage about. So, but before we get into all of that, um, and Maya will have further details, unfortunately, um, overnight, it looks like we had uh, another road fatality. Um, I don't have any details outside of um, knowing that someone, a, a woman, I believe, succumbed to injuries. And Maya will provide us details in her extended news break uh, coming up. So stay tuned. And, you know, as usual, just on behalf of everyone on this show and company we just want to extend our sincerest and serious and serious condolences to the family and community um, of this person um greetings everyone and thanks for making us part of your daily routine a good one today as we're welcoming Kanette burgess she uh, handles the marketing down there at north shore medical anesthetics so it is ask the doctor with nmac so she'll be on we're talking about oh nmac is doing more than just uh taking care of patients, how they're out in the community and uh, helping um, in these times. So looking forward to the conversation with Kanet. The Daily Play, it's the things you should know. So obviously there's no guessing. Kanet and, and Mac always come through in times like this. So whoever guesses the question right today, and I think it's kind of a medical question, will get their $100 gift voucher from NMAC. So stay tuned. It's your chance to win something big today. And uh, also, Folks, if you haven't already, uh, please do us a favor and uh, sh fill out this survey for us. Um, again, um, if you've already done it, thank you. We appreciate you. And you will be in a draw to receive a prize from us next month in December. Uh, but if you haven't already, your um, feedback is crucial to what we do. So please fill it out. Let us know um, your thoughts. Uh, we do utilize that information to uh, make this show better. So. Uh, yes, please fill out the survey if you haven't already. If you don't know where it is, you can go on our website, thedailyhour.com, and find it. And while you're on our website, please subscribe. Yeah, please subscribe on the website and follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow behind the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Now, well, good morning to you, Suzanne Ingham. She says, good morning, Premier Jamal. Awesome Friday to you and your team. Uh, good morning, says uh, Karen Simmons to the TDH family. Yes, good morning and greetings and happy Friday. So let's get right to it. Very simple question. What are your thoughts on the cabinet shuffle? Um, if you've been living under a rock or not just under a rock, just don't pay attention to news overnight as you release from the day, um, the premier, David Burt, uh, reshuffled his cabinet, right? And um, I guess the one that stands out the most is that Owen Darrow, which I believe his ministry was 
Ministry of Youth, Culture, and Sport is now going to be the Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Sport with youth moving to under Minister Tanae Ferbert's ministry, which will be um, youth, social development, and seniors. So those are the big changes. Um, Vance Campbell, who was cabinet minister and tourism, he's now going to be handling all the um, environmental stuff, which is interesting because the minister, the deputy premier and uh, minister of home affairs, Walter Raban, just made a crucial decision as it relates to the environment with the SDO situation at uh, Fairmount Southampton. But he will now take over all matters uh, related to CARICOM and the area of constitutional reform. So question very simple, folks. Um, a lot of people with a lot to say on social media, but I guess the question, not just what are your thoughts on the cabinet shuffle, but how do you believe this cabinet shuffle um, improves the functioning of government? How do you how do you believe that this cabinet shuffle improves the functioning of government in Bermuda? What are your thoughts? Um, I personally, you know, I, I know some people may have uh, issues with the the actual people, right? But I see. I'm going to, okay, let me be clear. I I don't know anything about Minister Tanae Ferbert's ministry to give a well enough opinion, right? So I, I know a bit, but I don't know enough to give a well enough opinion. But youth, social development, and seniors. Um, I always say on the show, if you listen to me, I always say children and the elderly are our most vulnerable. And I am concerned for those two groups because they're very vulnerable. As far as tourism, I see no issue with tourism and culture and sport going together. Tourism, culture, it makes sense to me. I think for years we got used to tourism and transport being the same. But I do agree with Shanna Smith right here. This is, I do agree with this, she says, no new ideas, just rearranging the deck chairs. Well, that's what you would hope. You would hope that with these changes come new ideas and improvements and new plans and strategies and ways to execute. That's what one would hope, right? Suzanne Ingham says, I'm under the road, Jamal. Um, Michelle White says, I missed the news last night. Well, we're just talking about, okay, I'll, I'll just start from the top. So I'm going to go from the Royal Gazette. I did watch the video, but uh, Premier redraws several ministerial uh, responsibilities. So the short version is that Minister Tanae Ferbert um, has taken on youth affairs and financial assistance, which her ministry will now be known as Youth Social Development and Seniors. Walter Raban, the Minister of Home Affairs, will now take on all matters related to CARICOM and the area of constitutional reform. Um, he previously oversaw the environment, um, well, planning. Uh, planning will now be shifted to the cabinet office under Vance Campbell, who was the tourism minister also. While tourism will move to the ministry under Owen Darrell, and his ministry will be known as tourism, culture, and sport. So those are the ministries. Those are the changes. Those are, um, those are the, I guess, improvements that are being made. Let, but I, I just want to touch on again removing the individuals. Right. Let, let's let's not focus on the individuals because it's easy to say. Focus on Owen Darrell, the individual. But yes or no? Do you think it makes sense to combine tourism? with culture and sport yes or no do you think it makes sense to combine tourism with culture and sport yes or no personally i actually think it does make sense however i would like to know from the government's perspective why it makes sense to them because why it makes sense to me may differ to why it makes sense to them I think it makes sense because tourism has evolved. It has evolved. 
sports tourism, cultural tourism, they're leading the way. I think they do come under one in many respects. I like that. I, I personally, I like that. Um, Polly Rich says, I do not believe it does. Um, she doesn't believe it improves them. Uh, both ministers, Daryl and Ferbert, now have more on their plate. The CARICOM and environment issues can be dealt with by senior executive. Agree with Shana, just shuffling the deck, no improvements. Okay. I, I don't I take your point and I don't disagree. Um Michelle White says yes, she she agrees. Um if if that is the focus of sports tourism. Well, I don't think that just needs to be the focus of sports tourism, but I think it's it's a great I don't know the plans. I, I, I know as much as you. I only know what the premier has put out public, but I don't see it as a bad thing to combine sports, tourism, and culture. I think that's a great start. My hope is that Polly Rich and Shanna are wrong and it's not just reshuffling of the deck, but history would tell us that you're probably not wrong. Misha Fubler, former cabinet, I'm sorry, cabinet, former candidate for the Bermuda Progressive Labour Party, um, says, I think tourism and sport are a good combo for ministry given the increased focus on sport tourism. Our athletes are also ambassadors for us while competing. Honestly, I, 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 folks, you, you know me. I'm no, the government is no friend of mine, and I'm no friend of theirs. But I do think it makes sense on the surface. Let me be very clear. On the surface, I think it makes sense. But we've seen cabinet reshuffles before, where it just changes nothing. It changes nothing. Focus Marketing and Development Solutions, Inc. says, I believe it makes sense in my marketing industry because our keys to success, uh, sorry, our keys to tourism is culture events and sports. I agree. I need to know what and why the government did it as that makes a difference. A absolutely. I, absolutely. I think, it, you know, it, I don't know if the ministers of these said ministries have given their press briefings or press conferences since the uh, throne speech. But my hope would be that when they do, if they haven't already, they explain what the new strategy or outlook, outlook is, right? I, I hope they do. Because I, again, to me, one of them makes sense. One of them makes sense to me. One of them makes sense. I'm not saying the others make no sense at all. I just may not understand them enough to give a strong enough opinion. Home Affairs, which is the Minister, um, Deputy Premier Walter Raban and um, Minister of Home Affairs, he makes, he makes, it makes sense for CARICOM to go under him, if, if you ask me. It makes perfect sense. Home Affairs, right? Although I still don't understand the true benefits of CARICOM, uh, 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 you know, just being all frank and honest. But what are your thoughts on the cabinet um, shuffle, folks? What are your thoughts? What do you think? Um, why do you think the premier thought this was a good thing to do and now? Like, you know, he did mention um, during his, was it a speech or like briefing? I mean, I don't, I don't know what you would call it, but he did mention that... Um, you know, immigration, like, you know, the customer service about improving that. Over the last two years, I mean, people have been up in arms with immigration. They've been up in arms with the wait for a passport. So, you know, my hope is that this actually does lead to some improvement. It was a press briefing, sorry, press briefing, um, the premier. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, your boy doesn't really know the difference between a conference and a briefing. I guess conference, they, the media is there to ask questions. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe someone will teach me soon. But what are, what are your thoughts, folks? What are your thoughts on the shuffle? Again, now let's speak about the individuals. Um, Owen Darrell, uh, I believe he's the Senate leader for the government. He will be overseeing this ministry. Do we have confidence in Owen Darrell that he can do the job as tourism, sport, and culture minister? Do we have that faith? Let's be honest. As bad as tourism is, it is still 
one of Bermuda's two major economic pillars. Are we comfortable with the idea that Senator Owen Darrell is now overseeing one of the pillars of our um, economy, main pillars of our economy? Does that make sense to you? These are questions that we, we've got. These are questions that we hope we get answers to. Are we confident that, you know, as, as delicate as Bermuda's tourism product has become, that he's the person from a government perspective that can be trusted to bring forth legislation and policies to improve Bermuda tourism? Do we say no today and wait? Or do we say, you know what? Give him a chance. Who knows? He might come up with a piece of legislation that revolutionizes the way Bermuda does tourism. It's a cabinet shuffle. It would have done well for the premier to go in a bit more detail as to why there was a need to change these ministries as he has, but also why the individuals who are leading, leading them, particularly uh, Minister Owen Darrell, to oversee that. What are your thoughts on the cabinet shuffle? Michelle White says, as a whole, tourism should stand alone and work collaboratively with a minister of sports, etc., He is going to be a single point of failure if he alone doesn't get it right. Oh, so you think, and I'm putting words in your mouth, you think that his good buddy, Premier Burt, is um, setting him up, huh? Now that's what I'm going to um, Don King about it. Uh, <laughs> Sean DeShield says, uh, tourism is currently in such a terrible state. How is appoint appointing a less qualified minister going to help? And Polly Rich says, no, he's too green. I, I will say this here. Um, it's a monumental task, right? I'm not one to run from work or difficult situations. Um, I believe that with enough creative, creative uh, juices flowing, we can solve any problem. I, I really do believe that. On the outside, I just don't see what Owen Darrell as the Minister of Tourism can do to help Bermuda get out of the state that it's in. But I'm going to be very honest and clear here. I am happy and extremely happy to be disappointed. According to um, a conversation the premier had with a, a news journalist last night. Apparently, he said on Minister Owen Darrell, he's a young and energetic minister who will push forward. Let's be clear. Owen Darrell's mid-40s. He ain't young. Let's be very clear about this BS. And as we has has been proven. Young people don't necessarily equate to better. David Burke is the youngest premier in the history of Bermuda. Let's be clear. Young doesn't mean more youthful. It doesn't mean more energetic. It doesn't mean they're going to do a better job than someone who has experience doing this. What young does mean is that someone has been on earth a lot Less time than others, I guess. Anyway, uh, Karen Simmons says, uh, there are 30 people in parliament, parliament. Why put so many ministers going to only a few? Ministry, sorry, going to only a few. That begs the question, why? I, maybe it comes down to trust, Karen. Maybe it comes down to the premier's only trust so few people to help um, within his cabinet. Um, personally, I like to see a smaller cabinet rather than a big one. Um, but I take your point. I, I take your point. 
tourism alone is a big task. Add culture and sports in that. And let's be honest, you know, I mean, Bermuda, in the last Olympics through Dan Flora Duffy, Bermuda won its first gold medal. We're in a good space when it comes to sports tourism. Well, sports, period. So I think we have a lot to build on. But let's not forget what Maya has been reporting on the last few weeks. Oh, you all didn't think I was going to have this conversation without mentioning this, right? Who has been the minister of sport all this time where Bermuda almost didn't get the opportunity to fly its flag because of non-compliance with the, was it the Water Doping Agency? You all thought we were going to have this conversation without me mentioning that. <laughs> That's your joke of the day. <laughs> you all thought I was going to be mature today. <laughs> I tried. I tried. I tried. Anyway, it's time for Daily Hour News Break. We've got Connect Burgess coming up. Talking about MMAC and what they do in the community, man. Um, But uh, Michelle White said, you're so much... Gy- well, yeah, I, I know who I am, Michelle. I know who I am. Um, But yes, there's got to be some justification as to why this should make sense to the people. Yes, absolutely. Um, She also says this makes sense to speak, uh, speaking to Karen, if there are only a few chosen who can be trusted with ministries, why chant the OBA about not having the numbers to run a government? Suzanne Ingham says, uh, yes, it's a shuffle, just rearranging the furniture, nothing new in the room, same old stuff slash furniture. And Sean DeShields will close it up with his comment, unfortunately, the choices for selecting an experienced tourism minister are extremely limited. And this is true. Um, let's bring in Maya Palacio for the Daily Hour News Break. But folks, stick with us. We've given away $100 courtesy of NMAC today for the person who gets the question right today. Uh, but stick with us. Maya has a very in-depth news break coming up for you that you don't want to miss. So make sure you share the link your friends, your family, your colleagues, send it through WhatsApp right now. Good morning, good morning. Greetings, MP, how are you? I'm doing well this morning, how are you? Uh, I'm I'm fine, I mean, you know, I was alone this morning to just chat, well, I'm never alone because the audience is out here chatting with me, but I didn't get in any trouble this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't use any bad language or anything. Good for you, Jamal. I'm very proud. Thank you. That's all I want to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So did you want to add to this, say anything? Like any, any thoughts on the cabinet reshuffle? Um, I'm very intrigued about actually uh, Minister Tanae Ferbert's reshuffle. I know there were some things in there, like it actually does align properly to have like youth and seniors together. And I believe the financial aid is going to be also looked under in that ministry too, because so many things happen with financial aid when it comes to youth and seniors. So it that that one's interesting. I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how that plays out. Uh, as well as tourism and sports, we've been talking about it for a, a minute now on the show uh, about them like starting to happen. We've seen the BTA do a lot with tourism. We're looking at the PGA Tour and also other things that happen. So yeah, it's it's an interesting flow. Mm-hmm. Let's see what let's see what comes out of it. Yeah, let let's see what comes out of it. Looking forward to seeing results. What you got for us today, Madame? Well, good morning. Good morning. This is a daily hour news brought to you by People's Pharmacy. Starting off the news this morning with some tragic, tragic news as a woman has died in a fatal collision that happened last night and a man has been arrested. Around 10.50 p.m. on Thursday, the 9th of November, police and other first responders were dispatched to a report of a serious two-vehicle collision on Somerset Road near the junction with Clyde Bass Lane in Sands. This involved a car and a motorcycle. It is believed that the vehicles were traveling in opposite directions when the collision occurred. The female rider of the motorcycle was conveyed to the hospital for treatment but sadly she did succumb to her injuries. The male driver of the car was not reported to be injured and has since been arrested in connection with the incident. Anyone who may have witnessed the collision is asked to call the World Policing's unit on 247-1788, or additionally, you can just call 211. Again, sincerest condolences. Um, Don't know anything about the victim, but what we do know, Whenever this happens, is it's a member of our community, and um, definitely news that we definitely do not want to be sharing, speaking about. Um, so again, condolences. 
Yes, very much so. Condolences to the family. Now, in other news, there has been a confirmed firearm incident on Factory Lane, uh, but no reports of injuries. Uh, this occurred around 9.50 on Wednesday, November the 8th, and police officers responded to a 911 call. The caller re reported that a gunshot was fired outside of Factory Lane, Pembroke. Police confirmed that the firearm was discharged and that no injuries were reported, and the scene was forensically processed, and inquiries still continue at this time. Detectives are following some early leads, and are appealing for individuals uh, with relevant information regarding the non-injury firearm incident. Obviously, they'll look into acts and speak with people, residents in that area to come forward if they heard anything in that area to give them more um, insight on this investigation. And you could also contact Detective Sergeant Anika Donawa with more information on 717-2250. Mm -hmm. You said Factory Lane. Yes. I, I don't know where that is, but um, I, I didn't even know until you said it just now uh, that there was a reported shooting. Um, uh, there's a lot of news going on right now. There's, yes, there's actually been some reports of like collisions where trucks have flown over that I haven't even gotten into in the news break, but there's uh, been a lot of news, guys, a lot well, of news. I'm glad no one was injured, so. Yes, definitely. But if you know something, please say something. Indeed. Now, in this next report, the Prima David Bird did release a video yesterday to divulge into the throne speech, but also included a message um, about the death of Marco Warren. So let's take a look at this small clip here. The lack of clarity around the circumstances has caused pain and frustration. The recent arrests and charge levied against a former senator is cause for concern within our community. In the wake of these events, it has been disheartening to witness the political machinations and personal attacks that have sought to exploit our community's pain and mislead the public. As a father, the anguish of Marco's family resonates deeply with me, and my heart still mourns for their loss and that of Marco's own child, who will never know his father as many of us did. My commitment to you as your premier is to continue to support the pursuit of justice for Marco's family, as I have done since May. I pray that in this moment, our community can come together to support one another, continue to be there for Marco's family, and allow the justice system to run its course. Now, also last night, Jasmine Patterson did have a one-on-one -on -one interview with the Premier, and she did ask about his involvement with uh, Marco Warren's case. So let's listen into what was said there. What date did you find out a vehicle registered in your name was alleged to be involved in a collision? On May 16th, uh, the investigator contacted me looking for uh, contact information uh, for uh, somebody, and I provided uh, that information to the person. There was no confirmation that that person may or may not have been involved, but they said that they were following leads and they wanted to speak to an individual. Okay. Uh, you said in your statement you were disheartened uh, about the overall reaction and rumors that have subsequently began. Uh, you know, how do you feel? Um, it's fine. I mean, it's difficult. I have thick skin doing this job for as long as I've done. I have thick skin. But the thing is that uh, sometimes these things affect others around me more than they affect myself. And I have to think of my family um, and others. And it's took me, caused me to, you know, to step back and do something that I wouldn't normally do, which is to address, you know, rumors and speculation, because I thought that it was uh, helpful, uh, because it was, um, particularly vicious um, and um, you know it was it was something that was certainly affecting people around. Now also there was a like a statement that came out from the Warren family and this is the full statement here but I will read the small um, message there in the corner where it reads that we understand that emotions are high and people want answers. We want answers too but we want the truth. This is apologies for the uh, logo being the way. Uh, this is not an attempt to smear anyone's name, but we want the truth to convict anyone who may be involved, whomever they may be. Currently, the person accused has been charged. Again, please refrain from spreading misleading information or acts of vandalism so we can get to the truth and ultimately a conviction. So that was in the case there for Marco Warren's family. Uh, there is a full statement that you can find on TNN as well. But closing out with that story that there was also some 
uh, movement that we talked about earlier on in the video that the Premier talked about key aspects of ministers being shifted around as well. So let's look into like what he said, but I believe Jamal did mention this, but just a little bit of insight from that. Responsibility for youth affairs will move to a newly styled Ministry of Youth, Social Development and Seniors under Minister Tanae Ferbert. Recognizing that most of its recipients are seniors and the disabled, financial assistance also becomes part of this ministry. I have also asked the Deputy Premier and Minister of Home Affairs to assume the responsibility for all matters related to CARICOM and the area of constitutional reform. The Department of Planning will now move to the Cabinet Office under Minister Vance Campbell, while responsibility for tourism will move to a ministry to be styled as the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport under Senator Owen Darrell. So what do we think about that? Um, you know, I've gotten quite a few texts and everyone pretty much thinks that the shuffle is nothing but a distraction from the failure of David Berta's premier. That's politics, and I wouldn't disagree with any of those perspectives. But I do still like the idea of uh, tourism, culture, and sport being together. Destruction or not. Well, in other news, the very long-awaited trial for the murder of Cheval Dylan Burgess begins today. Uh, you will recall that Cheval Dylan Burgess was last seen in April of 2020, early April, during the midst of the pandemic. In 2021, Kamal Wall was charged for her murder. It also must be mentioned that when she was alive, Cheval did make allegations of assault against Kamal. Kamal Wall, who is a lawyer and father to Cheval's son, will appear in court today. There's a full story that you can also find on the Gazette. Um, I just wanna say this regarding this case and any case that goes before the court um, and just, kind of echo what Marco's uh, family statement said. I know I talk a lot on this show, but I have probably observe a bit more than people think. And the unfortunate, you know, I love social media, Maya, you, you know how social media has benefited both of us career-wise. But I think it, it has some cons to it that are probably not in the best interest of our community. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make a plea to everyone in the community that as this trial was going on, just respect the family of the victim, if nothing else. Um, it's really hard. You know, people were asking, well, how does someone get a fair trial in Bermuda nowadays if everyone on social media seems to be commenting, regardless of race? And I, I really think to myself, wow, if everyone's finding a way to read something on social media, are they being influenced one way or the other? Mm -hmm. I want us to be a bit more conscious as a community um, when it comes to certain things. Yes, we're angry about a, a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I, I have my own challenges, right? But we've got to do better. We cannot jeopardize the very things we want, which is justice. And some of us are doing a very bad job of containing our disgust and our anger. And it's not going to be helpful and give us the desired results. So as this case goes on, as the investigation continues in other um, matters of importance, it's important to remember that each and every one of us have a responsibility as citizens of Bermuda to be respectful and to honor the family's request that are asking you what not to do. Hmm. I guess that leads me off to my next story because on Media Mile on Twitter and Instagram, I did ask a couple of questions that kind of relate to what do you do when you are concerned about any issues in Bermuda. So let's take a look at what the community had to say in these answers. So the first one you could see here is the ones from Twitter. This I probably screenshotted around very early this morning, so there's still some time left to vote on it if you wish. But the question was posed, when's the last time you contacted your constituency MP to express concerns or make a complaint or, you know, just to connect? So what you're looking at there, the highest is never, obviously at 74%, and over 100, so a total of 148 people have voted in this so far. Um, but yeah, you see that 
mm. never is the highest. And then over a year ago, it'll be next. And it trickles down to within a month and three to six months. And then the next one was on Media Maya that I asked the question on Instagram, uh, when, when you are concerned about anything uh, that happens in Bermuda, what do you do? And so the options were, do you po post about it on social media? That was 16%. Do you contact your constituency MP, which was 11%? That was the lowest one. And then do you contact organizations that can assist? 18%. And again, uh, do nothing or move on? 55%. So, you know, Maya, it's interesting. Uh, keep that up on the screen for a second, please. Sure. I tweeted this morning, or asked, whatever they call it now, right? And I said, let me just, I, I forget what I tweeted. It was an hour ago. I think there's spring chicken, I know. Um, so I tweeted, folks, um, and it goes along with this. I, I, I tweeted, it's okay to look within when seeking solutions to the problems that we're facing. That aligns with this, and I'm gonna tell you why. The fact that we're so honest to say we've never contacted our MP to express our concern, I would hope that that 74% also doesn't vote. Because what's the point in voting for someone who you don't trust to go to with your concerns? Let me go on to the second one. What do you do when you have concerns about anything in Bermuda? Nothing. I don't want to be graphic. But Maya has said yesterday what concerns her most, major concerns, are some of the laws in Bermuda. They're archaic. If we continue to do nothing, remember I told you, that's how politicians look at the general public. They, oh, they'll complain for a minute, but they'll, this too shall pass. You're proving them right. The revolution <laughs> it won't be won on social media. It's not going to be on some, like we have, folks. These results, though not scientific, I appreciate the honesty of the people responding which I believe this is representative of the majority. We've got to look within and ask ourselves, what kind of country do we want and what role do we want to play in the community? Because at, if your answers reflect this, you shouldn't be blaming the government for anything because it starts with you. All right, I'm done, Maya. And I'll do my part in saying this, that on Monday, I will have out a list of contact information for each and every constituency MP, and I'll post it on my website so it's easily accessible so people can go to it if they're trying to contact their MP. Um, moving on with the news, though, uh, a formal response actually will be given today by the One Bermuda Alliance in regards to the throne speech uh, that we delivered today, so look out for that. And finally, in sports, Oliver uh, Bichat, sorry, a 15-year-old local prodigy, uh, Oliver earned his spot in this week's Bermuda Championship golf tournament uh, through a 54-hole qualifier, posting a final round of 68 and surviving a competitor's Miss Birdie try at the final hole to gain entry. Now, according to Golf Digest, if a 15-year-old playing on tour sounds like a big deal, it's because it is. Uh, he is the youngest player to play in a PGA Tour sanctioned event in almost a decade. And here's a video of his recent performance that happened just the other day where he actually got his first party. So just let's take a quick look at that. 15 year old Oliver Betchar, who was a qualifier, local qualifier. This right. his second. <laughs> How about that? He's got some fans out here. You think? <laughs> That's fantastic. Wow. Mm. I love it. I love it. Congratulations to him and all the best. Definitely. And for our weather today, we're looking like a mix of sun and clouds, a little bit of wind. So we've got a high of 77 degrees. All right. So I guess I'm doing days of the year today. So what do we have for days of the year? Maya, mm -hmm. do you like cupcakes? I don't like cake. <laughs> oh, you've told me that more than once. My apologies. Well, it is vanilla cupcake day for those who like a vanilla cupcake. But you know what else it is? What? Give me it's, something better. It's area code day. Area okay. code. What's our area code? It's the four 
four, one, right? But trivia question for the audience. And this is in Bermuda trivia as well. What was Bermuda's area code before 441, Maya? Was it 447 or something? Or four hey, something? Audience, please tell this young buck what our area code was. Look, don't, whatever. Oh, yeah, I'm coming on you. I'm, I'm hating on you. <laughs> what was our area code, folks? What was Bermuda's area code? Everybody's going to get it, right? There you go. And you know what, Maya? 809. <laughs> We shared it. We shared it with the Caribbean region. It was all of us. All of us had the 809 before. So why did we change the 441? Um, you'd have to uh, look in Bermuda trivia for that answer. Um, <laughs> I forget. Um, but yeah, it was changed in the mid 90s, I think. The mid 90s, yeah. Okay. Everybody got 809. We were, so before we were the 441, we were the 809. I don't like the sound of 809, though. I kind of like it. You like it? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> <laughs> the 809. Where are you from? I'm from the 809. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah now 441 starting, starting to feel a little uppity, but um, <laughs> it's mm. fine. Okay. We got Janet Maynard. She said she sent a picture to her MP two weeks ago on the state of our gate, which trash that is not wholesaled and to date, he has not looked at it. Interesting. Who's your constituency MP? Michael Weeks. Mm. Yeah. Nice guy, not a good politician. I said it. Anyway, Maya, you have a wonderful weekend. Um, I got a few texts saying I love Maya's background light and it goes to her, um, the, the Daily Hour um, callers or something. Thank you. Yeah. Working on it. All right, all right. Well, we'll see you. Have a wonderful weekend. Got some rest um, and enjoy. Enjoy. All right, folks, that's Maya Palacio. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back with Connect Burgess and Mac Axe Doctor. We'll be talking about and Mac beyond oh, the medical office. They're doing some things. So stick with us. Don't go anywhere. People's ACW, located at King Edward VII Memorial Hospital, carries over-the-counter medicines, toys, cards, and even toiletries. Our knowledgeable staff are there whether you're at emergency, visiting family, or a member of BHB staff to show you our best even when you're feeling your worst. People's ACW, we're here for you. When it comes to footwear, we carry functional, comfortable, orthopedic and waterproof shoes. We have construction shoes, golf shoes, shoes for walking, shoes for boating. We even have shoes for pickleball. We have shoes for everyone. With brands by Skechers, Atrax, Propay, Easy Street, Nursemaids, Clogs, Avenger, Cherokee, Cat, Frog Talks, and DeWalt. The list goes on. See it all at our new expanded location on Bakery Lane. Welcome to the new bulk store. Lindo's next. Alrighty, welcome back to the big show. I'm Jamal Hartman. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Halls, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. Folks, if you haven't already, please do us a favor. Fill out our survey. We need that data to make better decisions for all of you. So just go to our website. While you're on there, subscribe to our website. Scroll down a bit and you will see it. Just click on there, fill it out. Take you about 10 minutes. If that, we are giving away a grand prize next month to a uh, winner. Someone who will, you know, fills it out. We'll pull a name out of a hat. Also, make sure you follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Without further ado, we're going to bring in Kanet, and she's giving away a hundred dollar gift voucher today. So stay tuned after this conversation if you'd like a hundred dollar voucher to and Mac. And um, you know, they do it big Black Friday, so you do not want to miss an opportunity to take advantage of that. But let's give a warm TDH welcome to Kanet Burgess. Greetings, Kanet. How are you? Good morning, Jamal and TDH family. How are you? I am wonderful. How about yourself? I, I, I'm good, man. It's, it's, this ain't your first rodeo, but it's been quite a while, like two years since you've been on this show. I know. I, no, it's, I've been on recently. I came mm -hmm. a couple months ago. 
<laughs> okay, I, we feel like it's been forever. I mean, I you know, know. I know. Know, like, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, but glad to have you back. I know it's, it's it's early, but glad to have you back. Just tell people because you've been on for numerous things before because you yes. are, do a lot of things. Um, you have um your own companies. You do a lot yes. of other companies, but tell them what your role is with um North Shore Medical. Hi, good morning again to the TBH family. So I am the consultant marketing director for North Shore Medical and Aesthetic Center. Yes, one of our premier medical and uh, aesthetics um, facilities, one-stop shop in Bermuda. So I handle all of the marketing, the sponsorships, and their community involvement. All righty, all righty. And she also uh, assists, so we have asked the doctor when you all um, have, we have the different um physicians and various specialist doctors coming on the show. Kanette is behind the scenes, making sure that we get the right person for you to ask your questions off. So again, keep taking advantage of asking yes. um, the various doctors from North Shore Medical, different questions about things that you want to know. But yes. look, I'm Max been very active in the community. Um, I know you have the, um, is it the 10K? Um, you do, you know, sponsor various football teams, Hamilton Parish. Yes. Um, you're very active beyond just what you do in the facility to help people. What kinds of events do you do and how do they benefit the greater public? Well, again, good morning, yes. Um, North Shore Medical is definitely a community wheelhouse. You know, our visionary uh, medical director, Dr. Kaiwan Brown, is very active in the community and that's his vision for his facility. So we definitely need always ensure that we are focused in the community. Um, and Jamal, you mentioned it earlier, you know, what, two of the main categories we like to focus on um, are youth and seniors, right? I know you have mentioned that that's something that, you know, you focused on and you like, and that's a lot of what we do, like you mentioned. Uh, we sponsor a lot of the sports teams, the Kappas, the Hampton Parish and different sports teams, golf tournaments, etc. cetera. Um, we also um, recently, I'm not sure if you've got a chance to see um, Troika Sarafina. We actually sponsored that. We're all about youth, you know, entertainment um, in the community as well. Um, we do a lot of when it comes down to the feeding programs, right? Um, we do a lot of feeding programs for our youth. Um, also, we have a feeding program coming up for um, the seniors. We do that every year um, in between November and December. This year is going to be in December. Um, so we're definitely heavily involved in the community, but it comes down to whether we're participating, whether we're donating, whether we're doing events, heavily involved in the community. Yes. Yeah, I, I actually saw that too with Troika. I was like, oh, I'm back here again. And so oh, yes. I, I love that the, those things are necessary. Um, so that, um, you know, people can understand the need for community empowerment and give back. And that brings me to my next question. Yeah, you know, important. healthcare mm -hmm. has been a big thing. You know, the cost of healthcare in Bermuda is is concerning to the majority, right? Um, what is MMAC doing to ease the burden on its clients as it relates to um, healthcare and, and savings? So we are doing a lot when it comes around to that. And we understand, like you said, healthcare costs are going up, you know, your, your bills, electricity are going up, food's going up, everything's going up, right? So we're here to say North Shore Medical has always been an affordable uh, medical and aesthetic center. Um, if you go to our website, Jamal, our, our patients and clients know that, you know, we have a dedicated specials page, right? There's always specials and discounts or some type of packages running at North Shore. So go to mac.bam and you can always see or give us a call or check out our social media. We always have something going on because, you know, our medical director, we believe in affordability, right? So we definitely have always have these dedicated specials that we have going on. Another thing is that, um, so for those of you who are out there, you know that, you know, your annual physicals, for example, did you know that there is, could be as much as 100, 200, $300 copay, you know, with your annual physicals? Not at North Shore Medical, right? So North Shore Medical, ours are only $50 for our major medical, which is a huge savings, a huge savings. Most people, even with our, you know, the government insurance and stuff, they're like, what, $50? Yes, only $50 at North Shore Medical and others are, are so much higher. So we try to make sure that we're helping our economy as well as helping our community with um, some core, save, core savings. We also have our... Um, new a website that we're launching actually soon so like I, I if i if i have time i can talk about this jamal um it's shop yeah. MAC. so jamal do you shop online on amazon or ebay or anything like that yeah I, I have i have done a little amazon 
Amazon. Okay, so if you shop on Amazon, you're going to love this. You and all of your viewers are going to love this. So we have just launched a new website called Shop and Mac. Shop and Mac. You can go on um, Notion Medical Space and Mac.bm and it links you to that as well. But Shop and Mac.com. And for those of you who like to shop on Amazon and other sites overseas, uh, we have products that are on here from health supplements to hair growth, hair care, right? Um, skin care, everything that you pretty much, for those clients and patients who know who come to that mat, that you go, you visit us at and much more now. We have increased our uh, our inventory. You can just get it right here. Whether you walk into North Shore Medical or whether you can shop online and get delivered to you at an affordable rate. Um, we have a website that you can get it same day, right? Pick it up or deliver same day versus waiting, you know, a week or a couple of weeks, sometimes a month even on Amazon. I'm still at packages that haven't arrived, right? Yeah. So that's something that's going to help our economy, our community, as well as help you get what you need fast. You can't wait a whole month or a week for sometimes for your skincare or hair products. Hello, hi. So we have it for at Shop and Max. So that's a, those are just some ways that we are have, helping our community with when is, it, when is it launching again, you said? It's actually launched. We just launched it. We just launched it recently. So... It's actually live now. Hmm. Um, so, and we're got, we'll have some great things coming up soon when it comes down to, can I say happy holidays? <laughs> yeah, yeah, speak to us, speak to is us. it too early? <laughs> oh, no, no, Black, Black Friday is coming up. What yes. is, is it early to <laughs> to say happy holidays? <laughs> yeah. Mariah Carey told us, you know, October 31st was over. She told us it's time. There you go. Well, guess what? At the Ocean Medical, there is it's always holiday season, I like to say, right? Because it's always holiday. We always have something going on, event, community, savings-wise. So a happy holiday is always 24-7 from North Shore. But yes, we have some Black Friday and some Cyber Monday deals going on at North Shore um, Medical and also Dr. Brown's Laboratory. So we're, you know, we're excited about that. Anything that we can do to help, um, except beyond the medical, you know, saving people money in the community, we definitely are glad to do so. Mm. For sure. Yes. <laughs> so just, just, I, I know MMAC is like a, is a medical marketplace. Um, what are some of the most unique services that are offered there? Um, I still have to come, come for my colon th therapy thing. Yes. Uh, hello. What are you waiting for? Let's get it together. What are you next on Ireland? Let's do it. Let's do it in December. Let's do it. Next. Okay. Let's do you it. Hit me up. You have my information. Yes, hello. definitely. Let's do that. But just remind the people of the various things that um, North Shore Medical does offer. Okay, so again, we are your one-stop shop. One-stop shop, say it to yourself, right? So like Jim, I said, we have medical to aesthetics to hair restoration. So some of the unique things. So Jamal just mentioned our colon hydrotherapy. That is one of our top services. If you, in a, and it comes on our naturopathic clinic. Um, they have detoxing, weight lowers, all those sort of things that you're familiar with. But our, this is a, a, a one of the, one is a colon detox. And a lot of times, you know, our, our medical professions will tell you, you need it. You need a detox often. And sometimes we have those things that are backed up. So that's important. Another thing, Jamal, a lot of people don't know about are our home VIP visits, right? You know, Dr. Brown, always like a little VIP. IP. Everything we have is VIP, VIP. This So our clients and patients are VIP, but also we know that our seniors are VIP. So for those of you who are homebound and seniors who don't travel, many might not know this, but one of our services, we do have VIP home visits. So when you give us a call or book, please feel free to let us know if you can't come out or you have, you know, um, you know, your wheelchair bound or something like that. We do have VIP visits for our seniors. Again, we focus on definitely our seniors and our youth all the time. So um, we have, you know, aesthetics, Botox, weight loss, um, facials, our spa services, 360 muscle sculpting. So the, the important thing is, I don't know if you work out. Do you work out or not? I know you're a fit guy, but I don't know if that's natural or you go to the gym. No, I, I, I definitely work out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so so we have a wonderful thing. So for those of you who work out or for those of you who don't, we have something called Amsculpt, right? It's done by Dr. Brown and also Cherise, our estheticians. And I don't know if for those of you who can do in, in a day like 20 setups, 20 push-ups, right? But this M Sculpt is gives you the um gives you that six pack of abs rapid rapidly. And instead of you can get a, a 30 minute session of M Sculpt, or you can do 20 sit-ups. I don't know how many people can do 20 sit-ups. In my prime, I don't know if I could do that, but maybe Jamal, you got it together, you can do 20 sit-ups. But if not, coming on to MAC, and we have and, and people think, oh no, that's a cheating way. No, no, no. We have some of our fitness gurus that come. Some people, they're like friends and family who are in the gym daily, hours, day and night. And sometimes you can't get those 
those love handles or those things handle. You know, those um, for those of you who have who have had children, you got those baby pouches and stuff as as they call them. You can't get rid of just normally. So we have services that can help you get rid of that. Things like teeth whitening. Hello, hi. Right, I know I need to go there, so don't do me <laughs> into me too much, Jamal. But teeth whitening, we have things like tattoo removals from our aesthetic center. You know, it's it's just a plethora. Now, of course, you know, for me, of our medical side, we have one of Bermuda's very own, uh, you know, consultant rheumatologist on island, twenty four seven. He's available to you. You don't have to go fly out anywhere. You don't have to go to anywhere else. He's right here and on in Bermuda. Um, and it's Dr. Farman Gonzalez, a rheumatologist, and he's also an internist. So for those of you who have arthritis, hello, we have, and we have so, so much amazing results. So yeah. much amazing results. And arthritis is huge in our community. So those are just some of the things that we have that people might not be aware about. It's just so many. The list goes on. What about you, Jamal? What is what, what is one that interests you? I, I'm going to try that colon, colon therapy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try, try that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna come by next month try it but you know it's, it's interesting because i think um you know growing up you know people only went to the doctor if something was really wrong um some people i mean i come from a family where we at least went for our annual checkups dentists yes. months and so on but um you know doctor's offices were not really one-stop shops so it's interesting to see how uh, it's changed so much yeah. where there are so many things um offering some on, on hand, but just remind people how they can um, get in touch um, to, you know, learn more about the services at MMAC in case they want to uh, okay. get to. Well, it's amazing that you actually just said that as far as the one-stop shop and the things, because North Shore definitely focuses on preventative. You know, we're mm -hmm. trying to have preventative medicine with our naturopathic clinic and chronic diseases. So we are definitely big on that. That's why we have our community fairs. I forgot to mention that. Um, community fairs that we do in free in the community and workshops and stuff like that. And anybody could book us a doctor to come and speak at their facility. One thing, Jamal, is that I forgot that we're actually, um, you mentioned something about people being proactive. So a lot of HR professionals now because of COVID are being proactive um, and they're reaching out to us to come and speak to speak to their um, employees because they realize the stress levels are high and stuff like that. So that's one of the things that um, actually based upon what you said, but how to reach how to reach us www.nmac.bm um, of course you can um always email us at info at nmac uh info at nmac.bm as well those are usually the best ways i say if you want to book an appointment we definitely because you know we're very busy so sometimes you can be waiting when it comes down on the call let's make sure you press that option too and we give you a call back but you can easily book appointments with any of our providers any of our providers all of our providers online you click the button and you can literally just one click you can you can go ahead and book with any of our providers so it's so easy right now you know north shore medical not only specializes in one-stop shop but we specialize in convenience so you know if you ever need anything reach out facebook instagram you know we control all of that as well nice connect this has been awesome thank you so much a lot said folks grab it up um black friday when those sales start the morning <laughs> drum roll please so our specials actually start on Monday. So, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things about convenience, I don't know if you, Jamal, I don't know if you shop Black Friday away, right? But I hated the one day that you just came and had to just, everyone's in the line, you're out there for like five million hours and it's cold and all that. No. So mm -hmm. no Medical, we always try to make sure that it's very convenient. So we actually do a pre-Black Friday and it starts on Monday. So we've got a two weeks for two weeks, Monday through to Black Friday, um, end of next week. So give us a call or you can come in um email us to confirm your from your um confirm your black friday specials we have things up to 50 percent off 50 nice. percent off now like you said with the rising cost 50 percent can go a long way when it comes down to medical you, you know your aesthetics your hair restoration services your hair styling you know we have we have it all at notion medical so Please feel free to come out, give us a call, check out our social media to see what deals you like from skincare. It's it's going to be amazing. Black Friday, Cyber Mondays. Cyber Monday. Thank you so much, Kanet. This was Thank helpful. You, a lot of information. Have a wonderful weekend. Not sure if you got a holiday this weekend, but if even <laughs> even if it's not a long weekend, enjoy. Market does not have holidays in uh, in, in, this, in November, December, July. You know, <laughs> we don't sleep until January or February. <laughs> I completely get it, but have a wonderful one and thank you so much for your Thank for you so much for having us on the show. All right, and we've got a hundred dollars to give away. Once yes, hundred dollars. Again, right. saving you money. Saving so you, you money. <laughs>
All right, talk soon, Cadet. Thank you, talk soon. All right, folks, if you appreciated the conversation, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Don't go anywhere. We've got $100 to MMAC coming to someone immediately following this final break. Stick with us. Hi, welcome to ER Fisheries. I'm Jalen Steed, store manager and trained chef, and I'm here to help you with all of your food needs. Let's talk about why you should come and check out ER Fisheries. We offer the widest range of specialty meats and seafood items. At a price point that will absolutely fit your budget. As a chef, I'm able to answer all of your food questions, help you come up with meal ideas, and generally guide you in the right direction. You'll get a custom shopping experience unlike any other food store in Bermuda, where we'll cater to your needs and provide you with excellent customer service. Where else can you get quality cooking advice? and quality products. I look forward to helping you with all your meal ideas. Alrighty, welcome back. Thanks again to Connect Burgess uh, and Mac uh, for stopping by. Again, if you appreciate it today's discussion, news break or conversation, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Make sure you share these conversations with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Um, thanks again to the BAC group of companies, Medicals, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we can do this with you on a daily basis. It's time for the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia, now available at stores throughout Bermuda Volume 2 is out soon. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. All right, audience, it's time. You ready? It's sort of a medical question. The first person to answer that comes up on my screen first, whatever comes up on my screen first, all right? So it has to be on my side first, will be the winner, the correct answer. How many baby teeth does a child usually have? You all are Googling. Close, Suzanne Ingham, but no cigar. Close, but no cigar. Come on, anyone else? How many baby teeth does a child usually have? Uh, again, close, but no cigar, NTS. Uh, Karen Simmons, close, but no cigars. Everyone's close around that area. How many baby teeth does a child usually have? That's the question. Oh, getting further away, further away, had lean swans, not 14. Oh, we are getting very far away, Janet Maynard says 30. Ah, no, 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 we're getting away. No one's getting, okay. There we go, Laverne Taka, 20. There you go. The answer is 20, according to things that uh, we should know. The answer is 20, 20, 20, 20. Laverne Talker, please send an email to engage at the daily hour dot com and we will get you a $100 gift voucher to North Shore Medical. Um, let's wrap it up though. Um, real quickly, as far as the discussion uh, regarding the cabinet shuffle, um, look, I don't disagree that Things like this distract us and take our attention from away from probably more important things. But what I will say is I have no problem with what the restructure currently looks like. My issue is what is really going to change? Do we sit back and say time will tell? Or do we ask for the actual answers now and expect a plan and strategy as to how they're going to execute and improve the functioning of government and in turn the island as far as the uh conversation with connect healthcare is an issue the cost of healthcare is a huge issue for bermuda and bermudians one thing that stood out to me was the copay 200 dollars or something usually in bermuda 50 dollars copay that is pretty good people need help when it comes to healthcare especially preventative. Credit to North Shore Medical for 
looking out like that. And hopefully more uh, practices will take, you know, the lead in, in some spaces to ease the burden on people when it comes to healthcare in Bermuda. All right. It is time for the Daily Inspiration brought to you by ER Fisheries and Foods. Here we go. Um, W.C. Handy. He quotes, life is something like a trumpet. If you don't put anything in, you won't get anything out. And he is a father of the blues, W.C. Hendy. That is your daily inspiration brought to you by ER Fisheries and Foods. Folks, please, if you haven't already, um, please uh, help us out um, by filling out the link uh, for us, um, the uh, survey. We really, really would love you to go on our website, thedailyhour.com, fill out our survey. Just take 10 minutes. The information that you provide us helps us make decisions for the show that helps us improve and become better um, for what you're looking for. So please fill out the survey. It's on our website, thedailyhour.com. Um, and please don't forget to subscribe on our website while you're on there. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Thanks again to our partners, the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. As always, we appreciate you. We love you. And we thank you for making us part of your daily routine. If all goes well, we'll be back to do this again with you on Tuesday. Again, on Tuesday. All right, we will. There will be no show on Monday. All right, <laughs> just want to make sure everyone heard that. All right, folks, I'm Jamel Hartman. Please do make it a safe and a great weekend. We are out. Peace.